Before we start hardcore qualitative analysis, which we will start today, I would want to tell you first what is qualitative data. So what I'm going to explain over here in the next one or before we touch base with NVIVO is that what are the types of qualitative data that you can analyze in NVIVO and what is the use of taking those qualitative data to NVIVO. So that is exactly what I'm about to start. First thing first, uh, what is that research design where we do qualitative data? So the research design where we go for a qualitative data is known as the exploratory research design. Uh, in descriptive research design, what we do is we have numbers, we quantify. But in exploratory research design, what we do is we try to explore and find a new variable. So uh, many a times when we are working with suppose one construct or one variable, for example, I am finding out all the factors which affect sustainable purchase intention. Now, if I see the previous theories, if I see the previous theories, there are factors which affect intention. But there are very few which talk about sustainable purchase intention. Now, here there is a gap and I have no paper which is talking about sustainable purchase intention. So what do I do? I go for exploration. What is exploration? I will be the first one who will find out the construct named sustainable purchase intention. Also, I could do it the other way. For example, I have a construct called sustainable purchase intention, but I do not know what are the factors which, which affect it. So I try to find out all the factors which are going to impact the sustainable purchase intention. I could do it in two ways. One is through exploration in which I go through uh, personal interviews, focus group interviews, ethnography, all the data collection which is involved in qualitative data and I finally say okay these are my items, these are my constructs. Another way of doing it is going through descriptive study. There what I do is I list all the factors which are presently affecting purchase intention and say okay this is my model, I will collect a data of somewhere around 500 samples, do a descriptive study or do a causal study and prove that model fit. Now we are going to work on the first approach which is exploration. So exploration is a type of research design where the information is loosely defined. I'll explain, I'll, I'll really explain what this means. Um, the findings are tentative, okay? And further a conclusive or what we call descriptive research is needed to say that okay this finding is now final. For example, for example, there was a research done by a researcher on what happens after death. So it was very difficult for him. Now uh, imagine this is exploration. Why I call it exploration is because nobody has ever worked on it. He was the first person who was working on it. Number one. Number two, he did not have a pre-described construct called what happens after death, he did not have a standard authored scale or items for a construct called what happens after death. He did not have anything like this. He did not even have past studies. The only past studies he had probably uh, would have been studies which talk of say mythology, okay, or uh, religious studies. That is the only base he had. He, he, he had never actually seen what happens after death. So what did he do? He, he uh, uh, took a sample of people who were declared dead by the doctor and then came up to life after five minutes. So I repeat, he took a sample of people, uh, which was a very small sample. And by the way, when you're doing an exploratory research, because there is no past review, there is no past review, we can say that even with a small sample of say 30 to 40 people being interviewed, you could give a very good exploratory research output. So what he did is he went to somewhere around 20 to 30 people who had been declared dead. They had been declared dead by the doctors, but then they came up to life after five minutes. He interviewed these people and asked them what happened after death 
He did a personal interview. He consolidated the findings and finally concluded two, three things of what people see after death. Now, this whole example that I've given you is an exploratory research, but uh, there was no predefined theory over here. Okay, he made up a theory of his own. And this can only and only be done, this exploration can only and only be done by qualitative research. But for the same, when I collect data through personal interviews, through videos, through audios, I have to know how to analyze it and reach to the construct. I have to know how to analyze it and reach to the items. I have to know how to analyze it and reach a theory, a conceptual theory. When you say making a conceptual theory, it is not just taking review from all sides and just consolidating it. That is summarizing a theory. That is not making up your own theory. That is just summarizing what people have done. So exploration helps you to make new items, new scales, new constructs, new theories, and even theories on something that has never been studied as good as what happens after death. Now, what are the methods of exploration or what are the data collection methods or uh, research methods for qualitative analysis? So all this you'll have to do before uh, you come to NVivo. So before you come to end people, you will have to say that you had an exploratory research design and then these are the ways I collected data. And each of these can be analyzed in end vivo. So the first type of data collection that we do is through secondary data. Okay, so the first type of data collection that I do is research papers. So we can import research papers into NVivo. We can uh, import past review of literature papers. Okay. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is imported and then I, I will do something called a line to line coding or something called an open coding. I'll tell you what it is when I go to NVivo. But uh, here, my what is the input of my qualitative data? It is secondary data. Okay, it is secondary data. So even if I was to make a conceptual model uh, by, uh, I don't want to do a personal interview. I do not want to do a personal interview. I don't want to do an empirical study. What is an empirical study? Where I have a primary data, be it quantitative or qualitative. So even when you are going to a sample and you are doing a personal interview, that is empirical study. But suppose I don't want to do an empirical study. I don't want to go to the, uh, you know, sample. I just want to analyze all the concepts that uh, have been explained by the past researchers. Even that can be done in NVivo. All the data that you have over here uh, will be past research papers. Okay, so rather than having 10 personal interviews, here I will input into NVivo 10 secondary data papers or 10 research papers for my particular topic. And I will analyze them. Okay, so this is the first type of analysis, uh, the input that can go into NVivo. Uh, the second type of input which can be collected is projective techniques. Now, projective techniques we generally do, I'll just read it out for you. Uh, respondents project their underlying motivations or beliefs. We generally do this when we are working with brands. So if there is a brand called Versace, which is a luxury brand, and I want to know what is the attitude of a person towards it. Or if it's a simple thing like when burgers came to India. So people had a belief, you know, that burgers cannot be lunch. Burgers cannot be lunch. We were so used to our um, uh, wheat breads and our rice that we said that no, burgers cannot be lunch. So there were times when, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies like McDonald's were doing a projective technique. Now, what is projection? Projection is uh, you would give uh, you would give the sample a picture or you would give a sample a sentence or you would give a sample a word and say, think, make a picture in your mind about it. Now, based on the picture he makes in his mind, uh, we can actually, you know, position our brand. We can sell our product. We can bring in new products. All that can happen on the basis of the picture the consumer makes of the product. Now, suppose I say, I catch hold of a consumer and say, okay, make a picture. When, when you hear the word bingo, let me do a word association. When you hear the word bingo, what comes to your mind? 
So when he is thinking, he will say, okay, okay, crazy stuff, silly stuff, uh, funny, comical. Some may say uh, Ranveer Singh. So n number of things are coming. Now all these things that are coming to his mind, we will consolidate, put it into a word file, and give it to n vivo. And we will have to do the coding part. The coding part has to be done with every sort of research. So it has to be done with secondary data. It has to be done with projective techniques. For all the type of qualitative data that I'm telling you, for all of this coding will be done. Right? So what is being done in NVivo will be done on all these techniques. So now I have to, I can take in secondary data, which means I can take review papers. I can take in projective techniques. So if there are any word association tests being done on a sample of 100 people on what they feel about bingo, I can take all that data and put it into NVivo and analyze. Mind you, qualitative analysis is only and only and only text analysis. No numbers at all. I repeat, qualitative analysis is only and only text analysis. Words, paragraphs, sentences. Feelings, emotions, they have nothing to take with numerical data. We, we don't have numeric data at all in qualitative analysis. The next type of technique would be ethnography. Now, ethnography is a technique where a researcher actually goes and lives with the people to understand their culture, their themes, etc. Now, why do we in management need ethnography? We need ethnographies because, again, if I take an example of a brand called Versace and it has to come to India, uh, it has to actually study the Indian culture. So, where brands like Brunello Q. Uh, uh, luxury brands like those have camel color sweatshirts or camel color cardigans in their whole portfolio, when they come to India, they will have to study the culture and when they study the culture, they come to know, oh my God, Indians are more towards colors. So Indians are a set of people who would like a red cardigan or a yellow cardigan and they change. Now, how do they come across this? How do they come across these findings? They do something called ethnography. Ethnography is a study of cultures, their themes, and for doing so, uh, it, it, ha it, it means you live for, with them at least for six months at least for six months. Now, there is an um, uh, there is a concern in ethnography, one being that do you tell them that you're a researcher or not? Ideally, you should not tell them. Because how this is different from a personal interview is that you're living with them and you're not letting them know that you are a researcher. And you write scripts and diaries and narratives about their life. Bring back, put it in NVivo and analyze it. Okay, this was invented by Bronislaw Malinowski in 1915. He spent somewhere around three years in uh, Throg Riyand Island and uh, he, he studied their culture, he lived with them, brought back narratives and then analyzed them. Of course, in 1915, they did not analyze it on NVivo because uh, at that time, a very manual analysis used to be done. The next type of research data that you can bring is case study. Uh, case study is uh, was has been made uh, famous by the Harvard Business School, of course, and it is a very very good way of qualitative research. Uh, it is used in explanatory, exploratory studies, and even descriptive studies. Uh, but in exploratory studies, how do we analyze cases? Is that we take a company, study its profit and loss. Uh, see how it ventured through 10 years, again, make a narrative or descriptive and then bring it to NVivo and analyze it. Uh, but a case study is one which can only be done on one sample. For example, if you see the picture on the slide, this man is known as Phineas Gage and uh, there was a doctor who studied and who related personality to brain. Okay, and how did he come to that theory of relating personality to brain is by this one case study. So this, this one man uh, was a person called Phineas Gage and a 0.8 mm uh, uh, rod went through his brain. And this man was very conscious and he comes to the doctor, he's speaking about his accident, he's very much conscious, he's not dead, he should have been dead but he was not dead. So he's speaking to the doctor 
uh, he is narrating what happened to him he memorizes what had happened to him he remembered everything and after uh, the doctor treated him where uh, it took somewhere around 6 months to treat him after that the doctor followed him for a quite a period of time to see the personality changes which had come to him uh, because his brain was damaged so before that nobody knew uh, i mean when they spoke of personality they only spoke about the physical characteristics so this was one case study and and my two case study can be done even on one subject so just imagine if the doctor had to wait for another senior's gauge and other senior's gauge would have never come into his life rather he was one of the lucky doctors who got a case study like phineas gage and he could understand personality through uh, through brain other doctors did not even get that chance okay so this is what is a case study it can be done on one person also generally when you see research papers qualitative research papers on case studies it is generally done on either one company or maximum two to three companies and those two to three companies are similar so there is something similar they are comparing in the case studies okay uh, this is the most common most common method of qualitative analysis which i think everybody knows personal interviews and focus group interviews so uh, uh, when you do a personal interview it is a one to one interview when you do a focus interview you have some eight ten people speaking on a topic depends on uh, what's your research objective which approach you take but whichever approach you take now i will be also uh, you know analyzing interviews in ngo today so uh, whichever approach you take and when you analyze this it is called content analysis it is also called narrative analysis okay these are similar things content analysis narrative analysis thematic analysis all these three things are similar uh, rather thematic analysis is more general all that coding that i'm telling you which we are about to do in ngo for all these types of research is called thematic analysis okay now uh, content analysis or narrative qualitative study means i have a set theory i have a set theory so i say attitude affects intention this theory is fixed this theory has been given in past literature i want to find out if indians are tally with this theory or not there is no research done as yet on indians whether their attitude affects purchase intention or not and that is what i want to do here i will do a personal interview of some say 30 to 40 indians and i will collect that content and i will see if attitude is affecting uh, intention or not but in content analysis we have to whenever you are writing a research paper which has content analysis personal interview content analysis done through personal interview or focus group you have to make sure that it is based on a theory so it's a priori it is based on a theory which already exists so what do you do in a content analysis you first search a theory and based on that theory you do a pi personal interview or a focus group collect data analyze it and then confirm that yes even in india that theory applies so that is the whole role of content analysis now basically this opposite of content analysis is a concept called grounded theory okay that's a concept called grounded theory you know what is grounded theory it was given by glaser and strauss a uh, grounded theory is um i i am i am describing something i am doing a study uh, where i do not have a past theory okay so i am going to conduct interviews i am going to study existing documents if you literature and then i am going to devise a new theory mind you here when i go and do my personal interviews when i do my focus group interviews or i collect audios and videos i have nothing in mind so which means i have no pre structured theory saying attitude affects intention in mind i am leaving it open i am letting the people say what they want to say and on the basis of what they say i will devise a theory okay so that is grounded theory grounded theory is not that easy uh, it it means you have to have a very solid conceptual knowledge also 
because see uh, it's easy to do a content analysis because there you have a theory you're just proving it through qualitative data so you're just taking people's interview and proving that that theory is existent in india but in a grounded theory there is no theory backing it so so i think the example that i gave you what happens after death the, the example that i gave you for exploration what happens after death is a very good example of a grounded theory so that person went with an open mind because nobody had ever written of what happens after death he did a research and then made his theory himself so that is grounded theory but even for doing grounded theory uh, you will have to collect data data collection will could be similar to grounded theory as was for content so the same interviews the same past review of literature the same focus group uh the same audio video can be used in grounded theory content analysis ethnography case study so uh, these are just types of qualitative research the data collection that you do within them could be similar so uh, an interview could be used for all a focus group could be used for all past review of literature could be used for all uh, the only difference is in the approach of making the theory in all these types of theories and then there is something called a uh, phenomenological study now what is phenomenological study is that you are describing an event activity or a phenomena okay and you are describing it in a qualitative method now i think the best example that i can give you is the year 2020 and the corona episode so this one phenomena which happened in 2020 is going to be a big basis of qualitative studies and there are journals uh, which are working specially on or have special issues on uh, corona times and brand image corona and uh, so and so 2020 epidemic and the impact on brand so there are already journals which are working on special issues on that so what they are wanting to do is they are wanting you to go to the consumer at this time of uh, you know corona in 2020 and go and ask people that will you purchase my product once the malls are open so they they want you to uh, analyze that and they want you to analyze that qualitatively so what you have to do is you have to go places get videos talk to people and find out i mean the biggest study which people are wanting in corona times 2020 was that uh, once the corona is over and the malls open and businesses open will people go to the market so uh, right now if you see that you know uh, in in corona times in the month of august when the malls august 2020 when the malls did open uh, the footfall was not there now all this is phenomenological study because this is all based on one phenomena it happened in 2020 it will never happen again it it has never happened in in past studies it will never happen again so this is more of a phenomenological study because it is one phenomena and it is never going to happen again so the best example of this is the 2020 corona phase which is which could become a phenomenological study a qualitative study for many of the researchers now uh, this all that i have explained you are all types of qualitative research and mevo helps in analyzing all the data that you collect uh from this whole uh, all all, all side, uh, types of studies there is a second very crucial thing that nbo helps you in or qualitative analysis helps you in and that is making up a new scale so many uh, uh, many of the people in my workshops ask me that um uh, especially when i do workshops for phd scholars they say ma'am uh why should i take a construct uh which has already been studied by someone so they say that why should i take attitude and intention when i know that somebody or uh, not somebody hundreds of people have studied the relationship between attitude and intention hundreds of people have studied the relationship between subjective norm and intention so many of the people uh, in my workshop say that i don't want to do this i want to do something new Uh, and they also uh, you know argue that what is my uh, what is my contribution to research if i'm just picking up a scale given by some author in attitude some author in intention and just finding out a correlation between them so which of course many authors have done so then i tell them that listen if you really feel 
and, and you don't have to feel by the way. You have to again support it with some literature. So if you have a new construct which affects intentions, say for example, uh, you say that um, uh, uh, ethical concern, ethical concern is a construct and it impacts purchase intention. Now, you have seen that in past research, in qualitative research, uh, where, you know, the uh, researchers have gone to samples and they have asked them, okay, uh, uh, when you purchase a product, is the ethical concern crucial for you? So they have done personal interviews, they have brought in data and they have concluded through qualitative data that ethical concern is crucial. This much of past research you should be having even if you're making a scale. So even if you feel I want to make a new standard scale or I want to make a new instrument or I want to make my own questionnaire for a construct called ethical concern, you should be having a paper which says that ethical concern impacts intention. That could be a qualitative paper. Doesn't matter if there is no construct in it. Doesn't matter if there is no standard scale given for that construct called ethical concern. Now, once it has been proven by some X, Y, Z that ethical concern does impact intention, there is no scale of it. There are no items for it. There are no statements for that one construct which is named ethical concern. Now, what do I do? I want to make a major contribution to my research. I want to study the impact of ethical concern on intention quantitatively. Not qualitatively, that somebody has already studied. I want to study it quantitatively. I want to do a correlation between the two. But to do a correlation, I have to have a standard scale of ethical concern. I have a standard scale of purchase intention, but I don't have a standard scale of ethical concern. What do I do? Here what you have to do is you have to construct your own scale. And you will be the first person to construct a scale and in research, uh, there is quantitative research, there is qualitative research, but a research paper, and you should see research papers if you intend to do so, there are research papers which have done nothing. They have not done a quantitative, they are not done a qualitative, they have just constructed a scale. So scale construction by itself is a whole paper by itself. And how you do it, how you will go for that ethical concern and construct it, that is what I am going to describe. And I'm going to describe how NVIVO is going to help in it. Okay, so just let me describe. So scale development and validation are crucial to uh, many of the works in health, social and behavioral sciences uh, because uh, a construct is a latent variable. Latent variable means you can't measure it in kgs and kilos and uh, meters, etc. So you have to measure them through statements you have to measure them through Likert scale on the statement. But then if there are no standard scales, there are no standard statements, you'll have to construct them. And that is when uh, we need the scale development. So just uh, look at this. Um, why, uh, why scale development? Because uh, now, now let's look at this theory. This is a theory I study very frequently. Many of you if you have been, and, and this is a theory being studied in marketing, HR, criminology, sociology, psychology. So it's a multidisciplinary theory, general theory that I've picked up. It's called Theory of Planned Behavior given by Aston. Now, uh, now in this theory, just look at the theory. It says, attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control impact intention. Intention further impacts behavior. Now, this is a standard theory, by the way, it has been given by a researcher. Uh, there are standard scales. Now, there are, if you see, there are five constructs. Attitude is one construct, subjective norm is another construct, perceived behavioral control, intention behavior. These are all constructs. Why we call them constructs is because they cannot be measured in numbers, kgs, kilos, meters. They have to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, measured by statements. So I should have a standard author saying there are three statements to measure attitude. I should have a standard scale given by an author who says there are four statements for subjective norm, five statements for PVC, so on and so forth. And I have it. So in my past literature, I have authors who have given me a standard scale for attitude, subjective norm, intention, behavior, PVC. Now, what I have to do is I have to just relate to them, but I'm not satisfied. 
Why should I do that? N number of researchers have done that. N number of researchers are using a standard scale. I want to make my own standard scale. So I go back and study what are the extensions, extensions to this theory. And I found out that one of the extensions to this theory was made again by Aston himself in the year 2000, where he said that there is an extra construct called actual behavioral control and that impacts behavior. Okay, so there is a new construct which he said actual behavioral control impacts behavior. Now, how did he say that? He said that with a qualitative analysis. So he has already done a qualitative analysis through personal interviews, etc., where he has proven that actual behavioral control leads to actual behavior. So I'm not going to repeat that qualitative analysis. That has been done already. I don't have to repeat it. What do I have to do? I have to construct a scale, a standard scale, or a set of statements or items for the construct called actual behavioral control. And uh, uh, when when I, I, I was trying to do this, and when I was trying to do this, I also wrote to Dr. Askan and he replied that there is no scale as yet of actual behavioral control. So I'm really trying to make a scale and how you do it is something which I'll tell you in NVO and review of literature, how we actually build the scale of actual behavioral control. And it is done, you would be surprised, it is done by personal interviews only. So if you have to construct a statement or a scale of actual behavioral control, you can very well do it with personal interviews. Okay, so uh, let me come to stages of scale development. So uh, step number one is that you have to start generating items. What are items? In a standard scale, you have three, four statements in front of which you put a little scale strongly, agree to strongly, disagree. These statements, mind you, these statements cannot be generated by you yourself. It has to be generated through a process. So it's not that I know the definition of attitude. So, okay, the three statements which measure attitude will be so and so, so and so. It is not possible to, you know, uh, make it just like that. If researchers are making it just like that, it's wrong. It's wrong. Rather, it has to be made only and only if you say these are the three statements of attitude. It has to be made by studying past literature review and doing a personal interview. I'll show you how. And uh, generally, you know, we take items from a standard scale from authors. So if there is, but there, there are in psychology, there are constructs, as I said, ethical concern, where there are no items. So for that, you will have to make your own scale. And how do you make a scale? Uh, you could make items after a study of review of literature, personal interview, social media data, data from videos and audios of experts who are speaking about a topic. So now, let me construct a scale uh, for, say, uh, purchase intention of sustainable product. So now I'm constructing a scale. Uh, now this is this is an example of um, uh, actually a, a research paper. You all can go and read it if you want to understand what exactly I'm saying. Now this was a paper by Strauss and Leandre, and they've actually constructed a scale. Okay, so they have constructed a scale for justification of unethical behavior. So that there was no scale of, you know, justification of unethical behavior. They have constructed one. Now, uh, you know, there are many weird constructs. Now, justification of unethical behavior is, uh, is, is not a common construct like attitude, intention, etc. It's different. So if it's different, you will not have a standard scale for it. And you will have to make it yourself. And the process of doing it yourself is something that I'm about to describe. So what do you do now? Suppose I have to make a scale on uh, ethical consumption. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm making a scale on ethical consumption. I'm trying to list out, um, I'm, I'm trying to list out the factors which affect uh, purchase intention. So there could be two things. Either I'm making a scale on ethical consumption Okay, I'm trying to ask people, what do you understand by ethical consumption? And they say a few lines and I make statements. The second could be, I'm trying to find out all the factors which affect ethical purchase. And I go and ask consumers that what are the factors which affect you when you're doing an ethical purchase or when you're purchasing a sustainable product? 
Now, how do you make a scale of it? First thing first, I will go and read all the past literature. So I go and read all the past literature and right in front of you, please take a minute. Please take a minute. Read the literature on the left side and see how I have converted it into items or statement on the right side. Please take a minute and read it. Please take a minute and read it. So if you see the major lines which are there in review of literature, Consumer agrees that the companies must engage in socially responsible practices, but they refuse to assume the possible con consequences, namely higher prices. So from here, I get my first statement. I will buy sustainable products only if they are cheap. Okay, I get my first statement. Also, although consumers say they are willing to pay more to buy ethical products, the majority do not do so because functional attribute is most important to them. So here I bring my second or third statement which is I will buy sustainable products if they have a similar functional attribute. Now when I say similar functional attribute it means similar to a normal product. Sustainable product, normal product. So from review I studied review and you know it's not as simple as just taking a paragraph and writing a line for so this one sentence, this one item that I have written or one statement that I have written to which in future I'm going to add strongly agree to strongly disagree, I will have to take at least four to five authors, you know, who say so and then I can draft this one statement, okay? Another thing I can do is once I have done this through review of literature, I will further check it with personal interviews. Now, this was only secondary data analysis that I've done to make statements, to make a scale for purchase of sustainable products. The second thing I will do is I will take personal interviews. I will take personal interviews. I will import data into NVivo. I will do something called an open coding, line to line coding or open coding. I will make themes or codes. I will do the word counts. And I will say, okay, uh, according to N Vivo, maybe, maybe I get some four more items than what I already have. So when I do an N Vivo analysis of a personal interview, when I go and ask people, uh, okay, I, I go and ask people, have you heard of uh, sustainable consumption? Uh, do you think, will you pay more if I give you a sustainable product which is pricey? And then people say, no, I will not give you more price. It's very important to me. There are so many products which are less priced in the market. I will not buy. So again, it is supporting which statement? My statement number one. So now what has happened is my statement number one is fixed. Reason being, review supports it. Review of literature supporting it. Plus, my end view analysis done on personal interview is supporting it. So... After doing this process continuously, you know, this is a mixed process. So I'm going to use secondary data, which is my past review, which is research papers to get statements. I am going to do a personal interview. I might also take videos of experts who have spoken about sustainable consumption and what are the factors which affect people when they buy sustainable consumption. I could take those videos also. I could take... Uh, a few audio uh, interviews of uh, the, the uh, father of sustainable consumption, for example, Dr. Russell Belk, uh, Dr. Sheeran, okay, uh, Dr. Timothy. So th these are all authors who have worked on sustainable consumption. If I get their research papers, I might take them and analyze in NVivo. I can take their audios and analyze in N vivo and of course my own personal interviews which I've got from my samples, Indian samples, I can analyze and overall analysis of that will give me these statements. So if you, uh, if referring to this paper example that I've given you, Estaus and Legendre, uh, this is, this whole process is what they did and they finally got uh, you know, these many items or sentences for a construct called economic rationality. Okay, so what must they have done? You know, first they must have studied economic rationality through 
review of literature like we did, listed out some items. Then they must have collected personal interviews, asking people what do you understand by economic rationality. Okay, further they must have written some statements. They could be overlapping or they could be an add-on of these four. They could be overlapping, for example, in review as well as in personal interview, as well as in an audio taken by an expert. Three people are saying the same thing thrice. Okay. And uh, when we do this in uh, when we do this manually, it becomes very difficult. But I'll show you how we do it in N Vivo. Because when we do it in N Vivo, what happens is N Vivo actually tells me that in my whole data, which includes 10 personal interviews, three audios. Two videos, five research papers. And Vivo will actually tell me where all in these 20 sets of data, including audio, video, review of literature, PI, where in these 20 sets of data price or cheap price is coming. So if I know that all of my 20 data, export audios, Personal interviews from sample, review of literature of past authors, if all of them have the word cheap, have the word cheap, and it says, okay, this, this construct cheap is coming from three. When we do modeling, we will see, comes from three, which means definitely, definitely, this is one of the statements. This is one of the items for my construct called sustainable consumption. Okay, so this is the whole process we are about to do. And uh, as I said, we are we we could do this analysis, qualitative analysis for either making up a theory. Okay, so if I want to find out um, uh, what are the factors which affect the sustainable consumption about Indians, why do I want to find out? There are n number of studies which have been done in UK, Europe, etc., which do show what are the major factors that affect sustainable consumption. Why do I want to do it? I want to do it. I have to have a rationale to do it. So if you're doing an exploratory study, you have to have a rationale, reason for doing it. I want to do it because in Diwali, when, uh, uh, you know, green crackers came into place and everybody knew that, say, uh, you know, India had a lot of pollution or Delhi had a lot of pollution and green crackers could have helped, people still did not purchase it. So... Uh, the Indian behavior towards sustainable consumption or ethical consumption or socially responsible consumption is very different from the other countries. So I want to do a qualitative research of only and only Indians. Only and only Indians because nobody has done it. And the, the uh, qualitative analysis from Indians of why they did not purchase green crackers in Diwali will be very, very different from all the past research that has been done abroad. Okay, so that is one thing. I might be able to create a new theory altogether. So, so there might be things like, for example, availability, uh, uh, emotional quotient of children. You know, my children said, no, I want crackers today. That's it. So I, I didn't have time to go for a green cracker. Maybe somebody says that. So emotional quotient, uh, availability of the crackers, price of the crackers, time constraints, okay, family pressure. So I might get these five variables from personal interview. And these five variables which I've got for Indians for ethical consumption will not be there anywhere else in the world. This is my contribution. But to get these five variables, I will have to interview somewhere around 30 people and then 30 people and then come to coding to these five items. Okay. Also, these five factors could become five items or five statements of a scale called sustainable consumption among Indians, which is a scale which is not present anywhere. It is not present anywhere. I might be the first one to do it. So this whole process that I'm telling you, and even after that, once you get these statements, then we go to a quantitative process called EFA, exploratory factor analysis. And then, um, but that is after data collection. So uh, first you make the scale and then you show the scale for content validity to an expert where the expert tells you uh, that the scale is good or not. Okay, and that is when you, in front of each of these statements, you could strongly agree to strongly disagree and then you go for a quantitative analysis. Okay, 
Further, when you have collected data from somewhere around at least 500 people on this scale, you do something called an EFA, Exploratory Factor Analysis, which is out of the scope of this workshop. Uh, but even after making these statements through qualitative research, you will further have to go into an EFA. Uh, you will, after making these statements through an analysis of N vivo and uh, everything, you will further have to go and do a content validity by asking experts that, sir, these are the statements which came out through NVIVO analysis of personal interviews, focus group, audios, videos, review of literature papers. Now, please let me know if these statements are OK or not. So the expert will say, OK, uh, just breathe. I think the last statement should be chucked out. You will chuck it out. You will chuck it out because content validity from an expert is very, very crucial. So out of the 10, you might check out the 10th one and you're left with nine items. Now, these nine items, you will put a scale strongly agree to strongly disagree. Collect data of 500 people. Go for an EFA. When you do an EFA, you might see that these statements are again clubbed into two, three factors. So nine statements may get clubbed into three factors. Or in an EFA, uh, due to problems, two statements have to be removed. So now you're left with seven statements. So this is your standard scale. This is your standard scale. These seven statements are your standard scale. And you can write a paper saying that this is the standard scale that I developed for a construct called sustainable consumption, which was never developed ever uh, in the past literature. So this is the whole process. I hope it's clear. I will now take you to... Uh, and vivo. So I hope, uh, you know, first thing first, the type of uh, qualitative analysis is clear and uh, what what N vivo is about to do is clear. So if it is clear, let us go now to N vivo. Okay, here I am. It takes a little bit of time to open. Now, this is what your NVivo screen looks like. All of you who have uh, downloaded the trial version, uh, let me tell you that you will get uh, an option. The moment you start the software, you will get an option which will say uh, work on an existing project or open a new project. Okay, so you go to open a new project. Okay, I repeat, when you guys download, I will be repeating each process twice so that all of you can follow it. And any uh, questions, uh, please put it up in the group. Okay, any questions for today, please put it up in the group. I will be answering each and every question daily. Okay, so uh, this is an NVivo software. When you open it first, it will say, um, open an existing file or it will say work on a new project. You go to new project and a page will open. Forget these codings, etc. Or do you want me to work on a new page? I'll work on a new page. So let me go to a new page. And Nico is a heavy software and might just be. So this is your project, okay? Okay, you get this, this sort of a page where it says open existing project. Or it says open a new project. So just for a demo sake, I'm opening up a new project. Okay, I'll not work on an old project. I'll, I'll work on a new project. Do you want to save? Uh, okay, yes, I want to. <clears throat> so I'll explain all this on a new project. Okay, one more thing till the time these... Uh, 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 a little, you know, it, it takes analysis, does take a little bit of time in NVivo. So, um, in case you people want to work on a free software, uh, not NVivo, but a free uh, software, uh, you could uh, download something called uh, QDA Miner. Okay, you can, uh, okay, now it, it is opening a new uh, software, it's asking for a project title. So, I say demo NVivo. Uh, class, you could also describe it, but here I'm not describing it because I wanted to open. So, uh, and we say create project. Okay, so I hope the steps are clear and it will create a new page altogether. I will start with how we import data and all that. 
So QDA Miner is a free software. Uh, you can import, uh, you can uh, download it, but it only does basic coding. So if you want to do a coding of review of literature or you want to do a coding of personal interviews, you can do it over there. Uh, but uh, for the uh, things which NPO does, like sentiment analysis or um, uh, uh, you know other functions which NPO does, those advanced functions are not there in QDA Miner uh, because it, it being a free software. So uh, if you have a free software, okay, so this is it, and it says I think this page you also must have seen. Um, I have to say new project. Okay, so QDA Miner you can do for coding. If you have a personal interview, you just want to code it. Uh, QDA Miner is a free software. Of course, it cannot do a sentiment analysis. It cannot do an analysis of Facebook, Twitter, etc., which I'll tell you. Uh, I have not checked audio or video analysis, but I would request all of you to please download QDA Miner also, which is free of cost, and just see what all features it has. So uh, let's just check what all features it has. I know it has coding. I have done coding on it and it's free of cost. So um, at least your coding of data can be done in that. Uh, very advanced sentiment analysis is that from might not be done. So that of course. Just take a little bit of time to open. Okay. Here comes the new project. Now this is like a new page altogether. Okay, if it says uh, start tool, just skip tool because it wants to take you to all the features of NVIVO. Now this is what your NVIVO uh, looks like. Those of you who have NVIVO 12, NVIVO 11, there might just be some very minor changes. Most of the features of 11 and 12 are same. So nothing to worry. Now let me start the first thing which is importing files because this is a clean page and nothing has happened here. So let me go to, uh, I'm going to import file. Okay, I press import. Uh, I will tell you what is mCapture. Okay, mCapture is, uh, is a feature where you, and uh, please do download this M capture. Okay, it has to be downloaded. It has to be visible on uh, Google Chrome. Okay, so M capture you will have to download. It will be visible on Google Chrome. So whenever you open a Facebook or you open a Twitter, etc., you will see this icon of um, uh, you know N vivo on the right side. So it will be easy to import data, all the data from Facebook, all the data from Twitter in in a single click. So that powerful and capture it. So when you end capture it from the internet, it will come to your desktop and from there we will import it to the, uh, I will explain end capture in the, in, in the next session. So here I am import and I go to files. I'm going pretty slow because I'm assuming there are people who are working for the first time. And I say, uh, okay, there are three interviews I'm taking. So there is Garima 18 years interview. Mrs. Asha, Mrs. Pathak, and let me also take Mrs. Satya. So I say four interviews you import. And he says, should I import? I say, yes, you import. Okay. So it will take a few, uh, a little time to import uh, the four files that I have selected. Uh, by the way, all these four files are personal interviews. And the first thing I'm about to do with you is coding. Okay, so the first thing that we are starting in NVivo, you can see uh, my files are there. They are showing on the screen all the four files. I went to import, I went to files, I took the four files and I put it into my project. Okay, this is my project. The project name is demo NVivo and I have imported all the files into this. These are my four personal interviews which I want to analyze. And I say want to make a scale, suppose, or I want to just make up a theory, right? So whether I'm doing a grounded theory, where I don't have a theory in the beginning and from these four people's data, I will build a theory. Or I'm doing something like a content analysis where I have a theory, 
I will confirm that theory from these four data. Whatever the process of qualitative analysis be, my input over here is personal interview. Okay. So, uh, the same can be done for projective techniques. Suppose, suppose I had asked Garima ma'am, Garima, Asha, Pathak, etc. All these uh, interviewees. Suppose I asked, okay, when you think of a brand called Bingo, what do you think? And they give me long transcripts of 20 minutes. I think this, 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 this. So even that can be put into four uh, inputs. So even for projective techniques, you have the same input. So input is same. What you have to do with this grounded or case study or ethnography, that is different. Okay. So now let me come to, I will press Garima 18 years. Okay. I will double click Garima 18 years. And you will see that on the right side, there will be a window which will open, which will show me the whole script in Word document. Okay, so if you see, this is the whole script of Garima. These are the questions I asked in my personal interview. And these are the answers Garima gave for it. Okay, now, uh, the same can happen with, with all other files. So if I say double click on Asha, and all of you please do this and see, I'm repeating twice. I'm going very slow. I'm going very slow. So all of you, please do it and see. There is no use rushing and learning nothing. So now this is Asha's interview. These are the questions. The questions are same because for all these four people, I had asked the same questions. And by the way, uh, uh, let me also tell you, how do you decide what questions to ask? Um, I actually uh, uh, read past literature to uh, uh, judge the questions I could ask. Also, I had uh, taken an expert interview of two uh, people from IIM uh, uh, who mentored me and who said, okay, these questions are okay. So I did show my personal interview transcript also, uh, personal interview questions also to experts before asking these questions. So I told them my objective, I showed them. So my content validity is perfect. So this is for... Asha, similarly, you press on Pathak. So any any place you will press and on the right side, it will show you all the scripts. Now, this is the script of Pathak. You will see that the questions are similar. And the the uh, uh, what we have to analyze is we have to analyze each and every question. Now, this is how you import data. This is how you can see your files on the right side. Now, in front of these names, you see something called codes and references. This is what we are about to do. Now, what is codes or what is coding? Code is nothing but it is a theme given to a transcript. Now, these are called transcripts, by the way. Okay, so for me, whether it's a personal interview, whether and uh, if you're not doing uh, with a personal interview, you're doing with secondary data. So these four files will become four research papers. Okay, so the same thing has to be done with them as is to be done with the personal interview. Now, what is coding? Coding is a method of giving a theme uh, to this whole research. So, this whole research of four people, I will be dividing into themes. And those themes will actually become either my items or they will become my factors affecting a particular construct. So, I have to give themes. This, uh, By the way, this was also done manually when I was doing my PhD in, way back in 2010. I had done all this manually, okay. But the shock uh, will be will be that um, this coding that we are about to start is a word is a line to line coding, okay. So for all those people who thought that now I have put my data into N Vivo, all I have to press is an auto code and my coding will be done and my work is done. You are here for a big shock. You are here for a big shock. Coding is a line-to-line -line process to be done for all transcripts, not only one, for every transcript. And it's a very, very lengthy process, okay? Uh, we, we used to do it manually. How we used to do it? Like, I'll give you a very simple example. When we used to study, suppose we were studying from the NCRT social studies, we used to use a highlighter and say, okay, this is an important point. Remember, that is all you have to do in coding in NVO. That is exactly what you have to do in coding in NVO. Okay, so now let's start. 
I go to codes. Okay, you have on the left side coding and you have codes. Okay, and this is just this is all text at every point in NVivo you will get what are so codes are themes that you identify in your data it is just explaining what it is now here what you do is here what you do is just a second you go to code and uh, uh, just click a right click on the left side you see this uh, bar okay the menu bar and it says it says coding, go to codes and have a right click. Just do a right click and go to new code. Okay. I repeat, on the left side, you have this toolbar. In that, you have something called coding. In coding, you go to code, do a right click and there opens a window. And it says, what is the name of your code? Okay, so I say the name of my code is, uh, okay, let me give a, let me, uh, let me say the name is uh, money. I'm just, I'm just taking a code because I've read the transcript. So it's easy for me to make a code. I'm just showing you how to make a code. Now, if you see over here, there is a code named money. Okay, now. If there is any statement, just hear this out. There is another way of doing this also. I'll tell you both the ways. Just hear this out. You can either first make a code and then put sentences into it. Or you can do the other way around. You can go to sentences and make codes as per sentences. So I'm telling you both the ways. I'm telling you the first way first. I have read the transcripts and I feel that money would be a crucial factor. Now, why do I say that? Remember, I told you content analysis. In content analysis, we have a predefined theory. Okay. So, when I have read articles about sustainable consumption before collecting this data, theory said that money or price is a very, very crucial factor while purchasing a sustainable product. I showed you review articles in the PPT. Okay, so there were review articles in the PPT also where past authors had said money is important. So that is why because I had a pre, I'm not doing a grounded theory, I'm doing a content analysis. I have this predefined notion. There is a theory ready in my mind. The theory is ready, it's been given by authors. And one of the points of that theory was money. Okay, so let me see in my interviews suppose this is interview number one now what i do is i can see money i can see code money now i go back on the left side in data and i go back to my files i go to data and i go back to my files and i say okay show me the data of garima i say okay show me the interview of garima and on the right side you have a script of garima okay now i will pick up the sentences from here which are talking about money okay now just read it out thank you for opportunity you gave me to talk about my family i'm in 12th standard my family has got six members housewife so and so so and so no money hasn't come uh okay anything about uh okay buying purchase is there but that is not money i uh anything about money uh, reuse I'm very conscious okay anything about money no there is you have to read it uh, word by word and there says no there is nothing about okay yeah here you have here you have a line just read value for money is very important for my family whenever I buy something expensive we think many times now you will highlight this one sentence which is talking about money say a right click okay click on right click go on code selection okay it will say it will show you in codes it will show money click on money and say code selection to money okay i am repeating the process i am repeating the process I had a pre-built theory in my mind. I am doing content analysis over here. I have a pre-built theory in my mind. 
I know that in sustainable consumption, money could be a very crucial factor. It is said by many authors. So I want to find out in the whole text, has the Indian consumer mentioned money anywhere? Okay, money, cost, cheap, price, anywhere. I go through the transcript. I found out that value for money, value for money is an important thing. I highlight that text. I go to right click. I say code selection. In the code, there was only one code I have defined for the software, which was money. And I click on money and I say code selection to money. Okay. Now, what do you see in front of Garima? Let's see what it shows in front of Garima. In front of Garima, it shows code 1. Reference 1, which means in the file called Garima, you have one code. What is that? Money, of course. And you have one reference. What does reference mean? In this one code money, you could put more than one reference. Reference are all the sentences in which money has come. Now, let me see in money, is there a second reference? Is there a second sentence? So, so, here it comes. Majorly, it is to save money that I prefer anti-consumption. What do I have to do? I have to send this sentence also into money. So, I say right click, code selection. It will show me money because I have given it a money name already. Code selection to money. Now, what do you see in Garima's file? Now, what do you see in Garima's file? Code is only one money. Okay, we are still working only on one code. And there are two references. So, in Garima, for money, there are two references. Okay, we will go further. We will go further and read line by line and search such references and put it into this code called money. Okay. Now, I have read theory. So, I am going back to code. I am going back to code. And I say there is one more code. There is one more code. Uh, people could believe in anti-consumption or people could believe in preserving their old clothes, etc. Or not wasting their old stuff or sustainability. Because they are emotionally attached to it. Okay. This I've read in past. The, this the theory says. The theory says what impacts purchase intention of consume uh, of uh, sustainable product. So one thing is that the amount of money they have to pay. Second thing is the emotionality they have to old product. So if they have a high emotionality, they will not buy new products. Okay, so they will become sustainable. This is all what I'm not saying this. This is something theory has said. So my second code. Again, I go to codes, I right click, I say new code and now my code is emotions and I say okay. If you want to write a description, you can write but otherwise you can just say emotions and this. Now, now in the code you see two codes. One is money. It was found for one file. Which was that file? Garima's file. There were two references. What do you mean? There were two sentences where Garima used the word money. Then you go to emotions. Now, let me go back to files. Left side, data and in files. And I say, okay, open Garima. Garima is still open. Garima is presently open. And I say, okay, let me read the script and see if she is ever emotional about a product. So, I read this whole script. Okay, I go line by line. This is also called open coding. Okay, so I go line by line. And I say, okay, where is Garima's emotion? Is she emotional at all? Uh, is there anything to do with emotions? In fact, there is a question which I asked about emotions. So, I will definitely get it. And all my questions also were based on past theory. So, because past theory said that people are emotional, so I put it as a question just to check if Indians are emotional or not. Now, here it is. Is there any social or emotional aspect of reducing consumption? And she says, yes, it is an emotional aspect in reducing consumption. 
and this has emotional value. Now, what do you do? Select, right click, code selection. It will give you two options now, money and emotion. Where should I put it? Should I put it in money or emotion? I should put it in emotion. I click emotion and it says code selection to emotion. Okay. Now, I will not do this for further coding. I hope the point is understood. Emotions and money were two of the factors which affect ethical consumption. Research told me that. So, I judge these. There could be another 10 factors. You could do this on 10 factors. But what I want to do now is, what I want to do now is, I want to code all my transcripts for these two codes. So, I did Garima's coding. There were two codes and three references. Now, I want to do it for Miss Asha also. Okay. So, I'll just do it and show it to you. So, uh, wherever there is money, okay, I have to read through and wherever there is money, okay, here it is, money is not much in our hands, so we cannot afford to spend on commuting, so and so, so and so, so and so, okay, right click, code selection, money, I'm doing this for a purpose, okay. And I'll just code one more of emotion uh, because I'm, I'm doing this for a purpose. I need to show you something. Uh, that is why I'm doing it. Okay. And I want one sentence on emotion. Here it is. We have social as well as emotional aspect. For example, knitting from old sweaters and all that. Okay. So I click this, right click, code selection. And I say emotions, okay, code selection emotions. Now you see uh, uh, Mrs. Asha, two codes, two references. I would like to do it lastly for Mrs. Pathak because I want to show you something. Okay, so uh, anything that Mrs. Pathak says about money, uh, grocery items, uh, clothing twice, she purchased four times a day actually. Okay. Yes, I am fond of good clothes which give value for money. Okay, right click, code selection, put it into money. Put it into money and say code selection to money. Okay, further there is a question I have asked on emotions. So, I will be quick. I will be quick. Importance is, oh, here it is. So, money is, again I have got another code on money. Money is not available with us. So, code selection, money. I got two codes. Uh, I got two references for money. Uh, that time, this thing is like there. That time, this thing is like emotional attachment. So, we reuse things. So, she says that there is an emotional attachment because of which she reused code selection. And I go to emotions. Okay. Here you go. And let me do a mini. Uh, you have to do this for the whole document. And all of those who, who, of you who thought that we just input data and it automatically codes, you are all mistaken. You are all mistaken. So now I have three uh, documents. Okay. So there is Garima, 18 years, interview Mrs. Asha, interview Mrs. Pathak. Okay. So the, the, these are the codes. Now if I go to codes, now this is what it shows file-wise. So file-wise it is showing how many codes are there in each file. So Garima has two codes, money, emotions, three references. Uh, Asha ma'am had two codes and two references. Patak has two uh, codes, two references. Now let me go to codes again. Okay, so in coding left side I go to codes. And here you see it also shows you the other way around. So it shows you in money. How many files have that code? So in uh, the code money is present in three files and in five references. Similarly, it also shows that emotion code is present in which file and in how many references. So the emotion code is present in three files and three references. Okay, so this is how you do coding. So this is one part of uh, this. Now we come to uh, another part, so th this is the coding part, okay, I hope you've understood. In case you're doing a grounded theory, you do the other way around, okay, in case you do a grounded theory, you do another way around. For example, when I'm doing a grounded theory, how do I do it? 
How important is value for money in the act of reuse and recycling of domestic commodities in India? I and my family, one daughter, two daughter-in-laws, even my grandparents. So I will pick this up. I will pick this up. Okay, till granddaughters and right side and I will say code selection. Okay, code selection and there's an option on the right side which says create new. I don't want to code it into money or emotions. I want to code this into something called family size. Okay, I want to code it into, I'm doing grounded theory. I'm doing grounded theory. I want a new variable. Okay, so I will say create new and it will say top level. Okay, and the new code I will say name it family size. Okay, name it family size and it will create a new code which is family size. As you can see, only one sentence which I have highlighted has been coded into family size. Similarly, I might go forward and you know when you're doing a grounded theory right now, my research is grounded theory based. I am doing this and I'm asking um, old women in India. So this is these are my actual transcripts where I've collected data and I'm asking the Indian woman uh, that in olden times when you were uh, anti-consuming and you were sustainable and there were huge families and little money was being spent, what all things were you not buying, basically? And if you were not buying, why were you not buying? It was the money a problem? Was the family size too big? Was there a wedding which you had to plan for? Was there an emotional aspect? Or, or was the society like this? Or did your mothers teach you? What was there in an Indian old woman uh, because of which she she was she was very conscious while consuming and there was a lot of reuse and there was a lot of making things at home. Okay, so I'm writing a qualitative paper on that and these are my actual transcripts and I'm going by grounded theory. I, I don't want to take a theory. So I'm going by grounded theory where I will, you know, code this way, emotions, family size, in, in, in uh, further on, I found a quote which was said, uh, a marriage of children. Many people said that marriage of children was something that we were preparing for. So we believed in sustainability. So I am studying all the factors of generation X. Okay, all the baby boomers, that is uh, our parents and reasons of why they were more sustainable than us. So my research is on factors uh, uh, affecting sustainability in the baby boomers generations in the Indian elders. So that is what my study is. I've done a qualitative analysis and I found out, okay, money was a factor. Emotions was a factor. Family size was a factor. So this is all the coding. And from this, I will make up a theory. Of course, I will support it with past data also. So I have two things over here. I found out three codes or three themes, money, family size, emotions. But at the same time, these three things are also supported by past research. They are also supported. So th there's a dual thing I'm doing. I'm supporting it with personal interview plus I'm supporting it with past research. So now you have these codes. Okay. And now we will go to coding is finished. Now we will go to explore. Let's explore that in these files. Let me come to the file view. Okay. I have four files. And I go to explore. Now, let me see what all can I explore automatically. Now, this is a line to line coding and you'll have to do it. It's also called open coding or a line to line coding and you will have to do it. Okay. So, all of you who thought that um, and we was just putting automatically, it's not that you'll have to do a line to line coding and make your codes and then come out with an item or come out with a theory. Now, let's go to explore. Okay. And let's go to word frequency. Okay, I go to explore and I go to word frequency. Okay, now it will ask me which file do you want to analyze and I say okay analyze Garima's file. Okay, I have clicked on Garima and I say okay do a word frequency. What do I want to find a word on? What, what do I want to find a word on? Uh, I, I, I'm not actually, I'm not finding out a word. What I'm trying to see is that when Garima was describing her sustainable consumption in a script of 1800 words, what were the most important factors which came out in her transcript? For that, I do a word frequency test. How do I do it? I just go to word frequency. Okay. And I will go and just say on the right side, run query. But before that, 
before that what i will do is if it tells me select items you see select items so i will say okay do this only for as of now i want only for garima and i say okay okay so it will give me an option of select items you can see file and external select item select folder so select items i am only selected garima right now i could select all four also but right now i have selected only garima now in grouping on the right side in grouping you can move this cursor left or right uh, sorry uh, below also and i say <clears throat> either you say exact match when i say exact match means if there is a word called talk and there is a word called talking it will group them into two different words but i don't want that i want talk talking talkative all those words to come together so it is like saying here my code is price okay so i want price money value for money all similar words to be even synonyms to be uh, uh mixed up you know mixed up and grouped into one category so i go to the third option which is with synonyms okay so now talk speak all words related to that will come so for in my case because i'm uh, i want the code money okay so money a uh, price value all these synonyms will come together and be clubbed into one okay so i'll get a basic theme out of this and i do this and i say okay a uh, minimum length it says three words okay when you say three words uh, it might also list words like a r e r u which might not be important okay so let's first do a very basic run query so i do a run query i do a run query okay and it'll take a few seconds it will just take a few seconds it'll just take a few seconds okay here we have it so it has the words listen the 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 maximum used words maximum used words that is 22 times used 22 times used was recycle recycled reuse reuse okay i give it more to my questions because i put questions like that look at the second category class family okay so 15 words in this whole script talk about family and class now what do you conclude from this what do you conclude from this you conclude that family is a very important factor when people are going for sustainable consumption this is what i conclude and based on this you could also do coding so you could go reverse you could first find out find out the words that people speak for example buying purchasing consumption old father generation generation mother again family again family so what is this this is again family so family comes twice once 15 once 11 so just just imagine the impact of family okay there is another count of 7 which says generation okay although this is a very very subjective this is a very very subjective evaluation but i see from this word count that family and uh, uh, you know class family generation father mother all these words are coming again again so in sustainable consumption family is definitely one factor okay how you find it out you find it out through a, a word count now this is a summary of a word count on the right side you have summary and then you have something called a word cloud okay you have something called a word cloud okay and this is what is a word cloud it'll again take a, a, a second or so and it will give you a cloud and it will show you the most prominent words in in you know big a uh, uh, huge cloud form of a thing so uh, these sometimes i see in research papers the word cloud has been given to prove the point that this factor is crucial for uh, this particular qualitative study yeah, so this is your uh, see again family if you see in the word count also family mother purchase old consumption okay clothes clothes has come okay uh, domestic commodities okay so uh, so people are speaking a lot about family people are speaking a lot about their commodity purchase 
these are the two major factors which have come out of the word cloud when i talk of garima i have still only analyzed garima if you want to do this analysis for all four you will have to okay it also shows let me complete this so you have a summary you have a word cloud you have a tree map okay you have a tree map okay so what does the tree map shows it shows children within the tree so people are talking about reuse when they are talking about reuse they are talking about consumption and old products when they are talking about consumption they are talking about commodities okay when they are talking about old products they are talking further so these are all branched trees okay also you can do something called a cluster analysis uh, but i think we'll stop at tree map and tree map shows you where so when look at family so when it says family it says mother okay and also what you can do is i'm going back to summary you know there there are words you could probably uh, sort of uh, you know you could make this three word into at least five words if you make it five words and run query things will change okay so things might change so these a uh, small little words like oh, so so see you have a better better analysis now uh, 133 items it says okay now i have done this only for one file you could do it for four files okay and this is one way of analyzing themes okay and once you analyze themes from here uh, repetitively then you can say okay my code will be family my code will be commodity purchase okay my code will be money so depending on that right so this is an analysis i have reduced the minimum length from 3 to 5 so that words like are and for can be removed so here i get a better analysis right so this is word count now i go to my next one which is called text search okay despite the fact that i was very very satisfied that family was a concern consumption was a concern that is okay but i want to see is money a concern so i want to write money in text search i went to explore i went to text search and here i said okay please check in garima's text if there is something called money and why only in garima's i select items and i select all four items i say in garima asha pathak satya i want all interviews to be seen all four interviews to be seen and see if there is something called money in all four interviews i also say please check all the synonyms so if it's money or cash or liquid cash or price it should be showing and after doing this after putting money and writing synonyms and selecting all four files i do a run query okay i do a run query and it will show me all the files so you can see that garima has three references of money asha has 14 references uh, pathak has 20 references and satya has 16 references okay uh if this is the summary of references if you go on the second on the right side you can see this toolbar if you go to reference okay if you go to reference okay so here are all the references so here are all the sentences where money has been used so if you want to see in which context the money was used even that will be shown to you by envivo how important is money in the act of reuse value for money okay save money money is not much with our family save money lot of money shortage of money save money money constraints save money save money spent money waste money so if you see all these you know phrases together what are they saying what do you conclude from these four indians or 40 indians that you have interviewed you conclude that indians are very conscious about not wasting money okay they are conservative about money and that could be one very very crucial factor in affecting sustainability so now what have i done i have judged these transcripts from two three angles okay so one angle was that i did a word count money did not reflect over there but i feel it should it it must be reflecting i've taken those interviews it should so i put money and text so now i have three codes i have family i have buying commodities and i have money similarly 
if there are other things i want to test like for example when i was coding i was wanting to test emotions remember i wanted to test emotions so let me test emotions and i say emotions and run query and let me see how many people said what can i can i is it a factor so now this is references let me go to summary okay emotion came three time in garima's text five times in asha's three times in patak so that, that's very very uh, minimalistic minimalistic so i think i i could probably make it a mini theme and then maybe i could club it into another theme so what you do in a, a qualitative research is that you put transcripts do a one to one coding or open coding list down the word counts do a text search and finally uh, you you uh, come down to some themes okay so look at in this whole process we have themes like money family generations uh, uh, commodity buying <coughs> emotions i have come to five themes now i have done this in just you know 15 20 minutes when you do this whole process you will come down to some 30 40 themes some people also come down to 100 themes after coming down to some 30 40 themes what do you have to do these are very big you can't make a theory out of 30 40 themes that would be a huge theory you basically need some four five factors so then out of these 30 themes you start clubbing so i would club family and generation into one and make it one theme called family okay so you club these mini themes and make factors and that is how you get your five major factors which are affecting sustainable consumption in old women in india okay so that is the whole process and we were of course is one thing but what i wanted to tell you and, and it's very rare i mean generally you know workshops are either on how envivo works or on either on what qualitative analysis is uh, the mixture of two is important otherwise envivo would be of no use at all 